All right. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to another session of the Lens with Advanced Design. Today, we have the honor of hosting um, recent graduate and an industrial designer at level in San Francisco, Ellen Posh. Thank you so much for being here. Um, we really appreciate making time for us. Um, a little bit about Ellen. Um, Ellen is excited to enhance the lives of others through design, whether it be through technology, lifestyle products, or home goods. She enjoys diversifying her experiences across the design industry. When she's not designing, she can be found doing hands handstands, which is awesome, on a 10 meter diving platform and keeping up with many hobbies, including being an avid foodie, surfing, skiing, fitness, and traveling. She's also a 2020 graduate from the University of Cincinnati DAP program, which we thought was fitting to bring her on board, um, seeing the circumstances that we're in uh, currently with a lot of you know uh, design students graduating. Um, we wanted to bring a recent grad and someone who's transitioning into design industry to voice um, him or her uh, opinions about how that's going and the state of, of education. So I'm going to hand things over to Ellen. Um, please, for those who are watching this, um, feel free to ask questions along the way. I will do my best to integrate them into the conversation during the Q&A. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you so much, Ellen, for being with us. Awesome. Hi, guys. Um, I'm super excited to be here talking to you guys. I have a little bit of a presentation to share, so I'll go ahead and share my screen now. Oh, it says that it's disabled. All right, one second. You go ahead. Perfect. Okay, cool. I think you should be able to see just a picture of me diving, hopefully. That's correct. Yep. Um, awesome. Okay, so I'm Ellen. Um, and like Hector said, I'm a 2020 graduate from the University of Cincinnati DAP uh, as part of their ID program. And I'm currently working at Level in San Francisco. So I'm just now transitioning into full-time design work. Um, hopefully I'll go to the very next slide. Okay, so I have a little bit of an overview of what I'm gonna be talking about today. Um, so first, I'm going to sort of run through my background a little bit and how I got into design. And then I'm going to run through three core values that I've pulled in design. And these are both true sort of as a student and then also moving into professional life. And then I have some pretty specific tips that I've laid out about sort of like this transition between student and professional and how you can be prepared. Um, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is my background. And I grew up in this small, diverse uh, city outside of Cleveland called Cleveland Heist. And it's a super creative community. So I was surrounded by a ton of um, both artists and musicians growing up, and then designers too. So I come from a unique perspective of, I didn't just find out about industrial design later in life. I knew about it for a lot of the time I was growing up. And my mom also actually went to DAF, but she was a city planner. So I was sort of surrounded by creativity. Um, however, when I was younger, I was really into math and science. And I did a lot of science Olympiad and building bridges. And I really thought I wanted to be an engineer. And I think I considered my creative side just like a fact of life. Um, that like everyone was creative. Um, so I decided to go to Georgia Tech with the intention of studying engineering, but I decided to try out design just out of curiosity. I actually had another friend who was going into industrial design and I think that inspired me to try it. Um, and essentially I fell in love with design and knew that's what I needed to do with my life. And then on top of doing design, I, um, was a diver in college and I had goals of competing at college nationals and going to Olympic trials 
and I was pretty serious with my diving and that's part of the reason that I was at Georgia Tech because they have a really great diving program. Um, so this video usually plays, but I think it's broken today, but it is a video of me diving. Um, and essentially I found a lot of parallels between design and diving and each require a ton of refinement. So in order to learn a new dive, you learn, like you learn, you learn lead up dives on lower platforms, you practice on turning the water, you replicate your takeoff on land, and then you sort of just practice your skill hundreds of times until you have it perfect. Um, so both design and diving require thousands of hours of learning and practice to master. And I think doing both has really helped me with both. Um, so once I sort of committed to being a designer, I left Georgia Tech to study in my home state of Ohio at DAP. And while at DAP, I got the opportunity to do all the things that I love. Um, both diving and design and then on top of it I got connected to this huge network of designers who were DAF graduates and then I got to co-op because that's part of our program we do five different internships before we graduate all across the country and then in addition I got to study in Germany to study abroad um, and so this next slide is just some of the places that I've lived in the past six years um, which is sort of all over the country. Um, so in Ohio, Cleveland and Cincinnati for school, Atlanta, Georgia, I went out to Georgia Tech for school. I was at Fossil doing watches in Dallas and Pensar, which is a larger engineering firm that has an in-house design team up in Seattle. And then I sort of honed in on the Bay Area and was at a really small design firm called Hips Product, um, a slightly larger small design firm called Level, and then I guess you would consider it a fairly large design firm as well as far as design firms go. I was at New Deal also in San Francisco. Um, and being at all of these places, I was able to narrow down what I wanted in a job and figure out where I wanted to start my career. Um, so I'm going to jump into some core values I hold in design. Um, the first is balance. Um, I found that what made me successful in both design and diving was a balance between the two. I was diving best when I was happy because of design, and I designed best when I was active outside of the studio, and I was able to leverage each of my passions to support the other. And this um, sort of plays into full-time work as well. Um, it's that a work-life balance is super important to me personally and I think one place that exemplifies that is uh, it was on my third co-op I was working at a place called Herbst Product um, and this is just a photo of a day that my boss and I like went into the office super early so that we could have a little bit of a longer lunch hour and go surfing during it. Um, and and it's just like an amazing experience, but it was all something where you have to learn about time management. You have to be able to balance your time between work and life and like carve out things, time for things that you love to do because in the end, those are the things that really end up inspiring you. Um, and so on another note, um, what I've learned about time management at work versus like your own time management is time management at work is managing time so that you can be effective like in conjunction with like a team of designers. When you're at school, you're just like, you're working by yourself. Like you could stay up till three in the morning and like wake up at noon, but you can't do that in the real world. Um, so now my uh, second core value in design is dedication. And dedication plays a huge role in my life, um, both in design and like I've said before, in diving. Um, I found that being highly committed and passionate to the things that I love is what made me successful at those things. Um, and so I have a few of my projects thrown in here antidotally. Um, so I can just sort of like share how these like values um, have like played into my time as a student. Um, 
So this is a project that I really enjoyed making. It's called Section One, and it was a collaborative studio between industrial designers and architecture students. And we designed a line of furniture and interior spaces for the graphic design program at DAC. And we had a huge team of working of people working on the project, and it was really cool to work across disciplines. So I did user research with focus groups, and I collaborated with architecture students to make floor plan concepts. But my favorite part of this project was designing the studio's desk chairs and making seven prototypes. So seven is a lot of prototypes to make. Um, and I've said this before, I went overboard on this project. I go overboard in diving. Um, it's, I think, the way that you're able to really like refine skills and hone them in. Um, and so that's part of what I learned on this project. Uh, so the end result here was a chair that was inspiring to graphic design students and would encourage productivity. The chair stacks so that they can be moved out of the way during design shows like that work. And the furniture I created is both practical and playful. So this next project is another example in the way of dedication. Um, and I'd like to talk about making a commitment to learning a broad set of skills. And I think being broad in the things that you learn is super important, even maybe as like a specialist, to be just a little bit broader than whatever field you're working in. And this like gives you the ability to collaborate with everyone around you and um, just sort of like be in the know about what you're doing. Um, so this is a project that imagines the future of strength training in gyms. And it's the design of a gym in addition to implementing this technology that can be used to track and coach workouts in real time. And this is super important in strength training specifically because a lot of the time you sort of need the coaching and the feedback. And so the video that's playing now is sort of just showing an example of that. Um, and so as I went about this project, I designed the branding for the system and then um, with some of the experience that I had in UX, I was able to get an interface together and then having worked at an engineering firm and then also bringing a lot of different products to life at various uh, co-op jobs that I've worked on, I was able to sort of visualize what this technology um, would look like and understand how it would work and do all the research behind it. Um, and then I also did like the more traditional industrial design on the project. So I designed the weightlifting bench, the barbell, all the plates and discs to go on the barbell, and then the dumbbells to work out with. Um, so this project, was my senior capstone project and it's something that I um, started I guess like five months ago maybe but as I was finishing it, it was pretty much right in the middle of when coronavirus hit and schools closed everywhere um, Cincinnati closed and so instead of just abandoning my plans to make a full-scale functioning prototype of my system I decided to transform my parents' garage into a green screen room. Um, and with this part of the project, the thing that I'd like to talk about is that you should never stop learning. Um, and like here, this is just a school project and I learned a ton of new skills from it, but design's just not the technical skills. When you're out in the workforce being a professional, it's all about organization. It's about understanding the engineering behind projects. It's about communicating um, either just like between your coworkers or between clients. It's about the business of design. It's about understanding how a client's business works. And maybe if you're in-house, understanding how the different departments within your company are functioning together. And then as you grow as a professional, it's about um, learning more leadership skills too. Um, so for this project specifically, I 
figured out how to make a green screen in my garage. And I was helped out by my sister, which was amazing because I definitely could not have assembled this by myself. And she was also the model for all my videos. Um, and not just did I learn the videography skills for this, which I'm super uncomfortable with, by the way, I like don't do a ton of photos or videos, um, but it's something that I've sort of learned to love through this. Um, I also had to learn all of these animation techniques. Um, so I learned Blender and After Effects so that I could track the motion of the things that I had filmed in real life and then match it with the animations that I was creating and rendering software like Keyshot. Um, so I could just sort of make all my videos come to life. Um, and so even though I couldn't make a full scale prototype, I was able to sort of show what the interaction would look like virtually. And I tried to make it as realistic as possible. And I think I succeeded. I'm super happy with the way it turns out. Um, and so it's just a lesson in never stopping to learn and always being super dedicated and going super overboard. Uh, so the next value that I'd like to talk about is community. Um, it's just super important to stay involved. So I have a few tips listed out here. Um, these ones all pertain to networking, which I guess is sort of difficult to talk about right now since we're in the midst of a global pandemic and no one's really doing in-person events. But as this webinar is a great example, we're doing virtual events too. So I think some of the tips are still relevant. Um, so go to an event and then talk about yourself, ask questions to people. And then if you're more on the shy side, like maybe just bring a friend to the event. Like personally, whenever I go to design events, I pretty much never go alone. I always go with a friend. And usually my friends are like, I guess you could say more extroverted than me, even though I'm fairly extroverted. But it's by going with lots of people that you're able to meet, I guess, more people and make more connections sometimes. And then also if you're on the shy side, sometimes it's good just to listen to people. You don't always have to be the one talking. And as far as networking goes to social media is pretty important, staying active on that and then reaching out to people that you admire and just like letting them know or asking for advice. Pretty much everyone is happy to share advice if they have time. So that's helpful. And then my next tip is to be a mentor and a mentee. Um, so in the past year, I've been part of two mentorship programs. Um, one was hosted by a woman in design in San Francisco. And <clears throat> I was essentially a mentee and I got paired up with a more experienced designer who had a lot of experience in consulting and had also just broken off to do more freelance work and sort of start her own thing. And it was really, and she is an amazing resource and she is someone that I stay in touch with even today. Um, it, like you just get so much by finding a mentor. Um, and then conversely, it's also good to be a mentor if you can. So, also, again, last year, last summer, I was part of a mentorship program at Cincinnati where the senior design students mentored the freshman design students to help them get prepared as they were applying for their first internship. Um, you are just like so much stronger when you have someone to help you out or when you can help someone out. So this brings me to my next tip and my next antidote, um, ask for help it only makes you stronger. So the next project that I'm gonna discuss as an example of this um, is essentially a problem that I discovered last summer where a lot of textiles are sent to landfills soon after purchase. And I wanted to figure out a way to divert this waste. So I came up with an idea of a t-shirt subscription service brand for printing on t-shirts with removable ink and then reusing the t-shirts with new designs until they wear out. Um, and again, this is a video, but I'll just describe it for everyone. It's essentially 
a t-shirt and I'm ironing the t-shirt and as the iron passes over the design, all the ink is disappearing. Um, so you can't see it anymore. Um, but essentially to develop this ink, I consulted a chemistry professor at Cincinnati and he suggested that I look into, what did he say? Oh yes, dissolving substrates. And I also reached out to a guy who conserves art at the Cleveland Museum of Art and he suggested that I look into light reactive pigments and using both these art and science uh, connections that I had, I did a lot of research on my own and I was able to discover thermochromic ink, which is heat reactive. Um, and that's what I sort of based the screen printing project around. Uh, so I sketched the whole subscription service brand and then I went about making prototypes of each part of the system. And here I was mentored by my professor, John, who's a master woodworker. And then the powder coating on my metal pieces was actually donated to me by a Cincinnati alumnus. And this was a situation where I was rushing to finish this project. I think I made all of these prototypes in a time span of about three weeks, which was insane. Um, but essentially I had this like raw metal piece that I needed powder coated and I emailed probably everyone doing powder coating across the Cincinnati area. And one of the places got back to me and said, oh my gosh, oh, you're a student at the University of Cincinnati. Like I'm an alumni, I'd be happy to powder coat your thing tomorrow when I have a batch going in for free. Um, and so it's just because I reached out to everyone that I got sort of a free powder coated piece for my project, which was super lucky. Um, and so then I did all the screen printing uh, or the whole system from the screen printing and I went overboard again and made eight sample designs and eight sample screens. Um, so I was in the wood shop for a while. It's a really long time making these. And Brian is the head of the metal shop at DAP, and he happens to have a master's degree in screen printing from Cranbrook. And while I was in the shop, he sort of asked what my project was about, and I told him what I was doing, and he was like, oh my gosh, I can teach you exactly how to do everything properly. Um, and it was because I was willing to share and tell everyone what I was doing that I got the opportunity um, to learn how to screen print. Like, without having to spend a ton of time teaching myself. So I designed a rack to display the t-shirt and then an ironing board to remove the thermochromic ink left. I did the design of the whole system plus the branding. And then when I finished this project, I moved back home to Cleveland and there's a pretty close knit design community in my hometown. And through that, I was given access to a photography studio to take all the photos for this project. And it's a just, I think it's a good example of a project where I really learned to not be afraid to ask for help. Always ask for help. Like people are just so willing to help, um, especially as a student and especially as a young professional. So the next thing I'd like to go over is just some specific tips of what I've learned going between a student and a professional. Um, I know when I was doing my mentorship program at Cincinnati, a lot of the younger students had a ton of questions about portfolios. And I think this is relevant for, I don't know, most people applying for a job. So I have three tips that I think are really important that I'm going to share. Um, the first one is show your process. Um, employers want to see how you think, not just the final result that you produce. Um, the second one is update your work. So if you have projects that aren't representative of you as a designer, replace those projects. Or if you have great projects that you still love, um, but you've learned new skills, maybe update those projects with new skills. And then the third one is keep your portfolio as clean as possible because you do not want to polarize people with your graphics. Uh, you want something that is clean and everyone can agree on that they like it. Um, 
So this is another example of a project that I have in my portfolio that I think represents some of these tips. Um, it's a system of drills for communal shops and maker spaces. So I start out the project with showing all the opportunities that I found to design around, which I um, designed around this like task analysis that I did with my friend where I watched her use a drill. And then I show off some research that I did for the project, the objectives that I have, uh, sort of like the goals that I'm working towards with what I'm doing. I talk about the brand that I'm representing. And then I go through all the sketches that I did, anywhere from thumbnails to full scale renders. Um, and then I talk about the forms that I developed. Uh, I, this was a lot of drawing around orthographics and Illustrator, and then carving pink foam to match those orthographics. Um, and so you can sort of see like where I started like in the progression to where how I got there. Um, and then my portfolio goes into more specific around the project. So like the orthographic form. And this next slide actually in here just to show an example of updating your portfolio. So this project is about three years old which is a pretty old portfolio to still have in, or a pretty old project to still have in my portfolio. And this was an original render that I did for the project. And it's, it's not awful because it's like three years old, so I you know, like hate on myself, but it's pretty flat. Um, like the metal pieces are not very shiny. And then I update it here to this more high contrast render. And this was after I learned how to like make drop shadows in Keyshot and put something in context and add a drill bit for again, more context. And I sort of updated all the renders for this project just to show off that I knew how to render. And then on that note, like the sketch pages in portfolios are oftentimes not done at the same time that you're doing the project. So I'm fairly certain that this is something that I drew after I had designed the drill that I was designing. And then even just like the imagery behind the project is stuff that you can just constantly update and refine so that your presentation looks great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's just the rest of the project here. Um, so the next tip that I have outside of portfolios, but also from inside of a portfolio is represent yourself, um, do some self discovery and figure out what makes you different and what makes you valuable to whatever design team that you're going to be on. Um, so for me, the way that I like to represent myself is through my diving and it's just like diving specifically has given me a really unique lens um at work too when i've been on projects where uh, we're dealing with athletics or competition um so that's like a really fun like perspective that i'm able to bring to the table but i think anyone has their own strengths that they can highlight so this could just be like a passion for photography or a baking addiction or just anything that's like that you love to do, it's important to show those things, I think. Um, and so this next tip is on here because I have a friend who hates to promote himself. And I think it's because he's so humble, but promote yourself as a designer, get yourself out there, make a website, post things on LinkedIn, post things on Instagram, um, don't ever feel bad about showing off your work because it's amazing to show off work. You get feedback when you show off work, which is honestly super helpful. And then it also just like makes people aware of you as a designer. So my last tip here is get a lot of experience, um, especially as a young professional, maybe even more so as a student. Um, I've learned this while I was at Cincinnati through doing 
I guess I did five co-ops in school and then I did another internship before I started at Cincinnati. Um, just getting experience is so important and this could be even just experience like in fields that are tangential to design. Um, this could be like, I don't know, like the first internship that I did before I got to design school was a graphic design internship in Cleveland at a graphic design consultancy. And the skills I learned there were a lot about consulting, but then I also gained a lot of graphic skills. And so really anything like tangentially related to design, especially when you're starting out, like gives you really great experience going into maybe a more full-time job. And then the other thing that I'd like to talk about as far as getting a ton of experience is the photo on this page is from Level, which is where I'm working right now. And through all of my co-ops, I was at big firms and companies and like really, really small firms where it was just like me and a boss working on a project up until like, you know, like a design firm with 30 people. And it was sort of like Goldilocks. Um, it was like too big, too small, just right. And level for me was just the right size. Um, I think, well, we actually have a little bit more people on the team than when I was there first, but um, like five to 10 people, I think is a good size for me because uh, it gives you a lot of creative freedom because there's never too many people working on a project. And you also get to be involved in all steps of the process. Um, so through trying all the different experiences, I was able to hone on and hone in on exactly where I wanted to be. And because I had experience working at Level in the past, um, it was really easy to start a job there. Like I guess I started three weeks ago now, um, and it's been really fun so far. So. In conclusion, we to balanced life. It's the things outside of design that often will inspire you the most. Um, be really dedicated to the things that you're passionate about because when you go overboard on a project or spend a lot of time learning a new skill, that's gonna differentiate you as a designer. And then stay really involved in the design community, ask for help um, or just give advice to other people um, this strengthens you as a designer, but then it also strengthens the design profession as a whole. So, thanks. Well, thank you so much, Ellen, for uh, providing us with yep. um, these amazing insights. Thank you. Um, a lot of the viewers cool. that uh, tune into our Lens sessions are students, so that was fantastic um, that you put that together. Um, a couple of questions that I have for you. Um, number one, uh, Level's an awesome studio. Um, it's really funny because mm -hmm. um, on Thursday, we are going to be, uh, our guest is going to be Nicole, so we're very excited for that. Um, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, so so back-to-back -back, um, designers from Level. Um, but a question that I have for you is someone, who went, to DAP, someone who went to DAP and have you know, um, this much experience in the co-op internship program at DAP. Um, mm -hmm. uh, th there has been um, um, situations where a lot of students, um, you know, um, you know, gather this internship uh, experience and they're able to even accept full-time positions without having to come back to school to finish, you know, their degree. Mm -hmm. Um, can you speak a little about that? Because uh, Cincinnati has this amazing co-op program, which makes the school one of the best schools in the country. Mm -hmm. um, but what makes yeah. you come back for your last year? Um, what value does that bring or give you that, that you know, kind of uh, convinces you to come back and graduate? So... I think obviously the thing that's really special about DAP is the co-op program and I think that's where we learn a lot of the stuff that we learn but I think the thing that's valuable about DAP itself is that you have 
tons of people. You have 80 people who are going out and getting an experience and then coming back together. And when all the people come back together, we all share skills. And I've probably learned just as much from friends who have learned something on a different co-op than just my own co-op. So I think like that's a lot of the learning that you get at staff. And at least for me, like staffs are really super special place for me. And just like there's so many memories that I've had there. Um, and so I think like that nostalgia is like part of the reason that I would always want to come back. But it's interesting when you ask about people um, not coming back because I had a friend who was offered a full time position and essentially was ready to drop out of school and for whatever reason decided to come back and I don't know I hope he's happy he did it was nice to have him back around like for our last semester at that but yeah yeah I mean I think Dab does a fantastic job to set you up for success um mm -hmm. and uh the reality is some of some of your classmates and yourself might um get full-time you know, um, positions, uh, opportunities um, proposed to them. Um, so, you know, it's really funny the situation that Dap kind of puts himself in where they really prepare for success. Um, but uh, if, if students do find themselves in that position, there's no guarantee that they'll come back to finish their last year or, or whatever the case may be, um, which is, I guess, a really good position that the, yep. to be in. Um, it's a win-win situation, mm -hmm. but I'm really happy. Uh, thank you so much for all of that. I'm going to start uh, kind of uh, integrating some of these questions uh, that we're getting from our audience. Um, one question here that we have from Thomas, uh, what are you doing right now design-wise while you're in quarantine besides working, um, you know, at level remotely? So, okay, this is an interesting question. Okay, so essentially I graduated about three and a half weeks ago. And then like the day before I actually graduated, I started at level. And previous to that, I had been working on my design capstone, which I was working like 16-ish hours a day on for about a month straight. And then I started work at level and we've been really busy at level, which is great because it's really, really lucky to be at a place that has work right now um so between those two things and then like posting things about the design work that I've done in the past so I like posted my capstone on Instagram LinkedIn and all of and Facebook I think too um so honestly I have not started any other design projects since being in quarantine I've actually just been in this like unique position of like just trying to like stay afloat and finish all the things that I had started, I guess, beforehand. Um, I don't know. And, and that's okay, too. I think, you know, I sleep half the time. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, here's a question uh, yeah. by Sol Raleigh. Uh, they want to know, uh, how do you apply for an internship as a student when you don't have much of a, when you don't have much of a portfolio? Um, Definitely try and get a part of a portfolio together at least or just some work samples together. And then I think the thing that's helpful like for a first internship is reaching out to any connections that you might have, whether it's like a professor who might be involved in industry or like even like networking through like your parents if they know any design professionals or like the graphic design internship that I did in Cleveland, the guy who owns the firm lives like 10 houses down from me on my street. Um, and so I was able to make a connection to get an internship, which is helpful if you're able to do it. And then if not, apply to like just tons of places. Um, it, like some places might not even need a portfolio just to explain the experience that you have or say, you know, I'd like to learn. Um, I'm not super experienced right now, but uh, if you have a place for me in the office, could I shadow or just learn from you? Yeah. Um, and answer uh, I can hear question. you, Hector. 
yeah, an answer to that question um, will probably require um, probably its own lens session um, because that's a really big question. Yeah. Right. That, that's a very uh, yeah. starter question. It, it, there's a lot of answers to that. So here's a question from Joe. Um, it's a kind of funny question. Do you have any advice on finding a hobby or interest outside of design? It's, Joe doesn't have one at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is interesting because I, for such a long time, have been doing design, and then my like second hobby has been diving because it's something that's like sort of full time that I love doing. But you can only dive for four years in college, and there's not a ton of resources to dive outside of college, like after college. Um, so I still go diving for fun, like on occasion, but I've also been, I guess, in the hunt for finding a new hobby. And um, because I love sort of adrenaline and action sort, sort of thing, um, I've tried things sort of like tangential to diving, which I already know I love. Um, so I've done like skiing and surfing, um, which are sort of more like adrenaline based sports. And then I've also tried things sort of, I guess, like tangential to design. So, you know, like design is a pretty creative thing. Um, you could try sort of almost anything else that's also creative. Um, so I've been really, I love like cooking. Um, so I make a lot of food, um, bake a lot of things, which I think is a fun way to experiment. But that, I don't know, you could also experiment with like photography or graphic design or I don't know. There's just like tons of things you can try. Absolutely. Um, I think also, um, and I think what you did was was really good, where you you kind of married your your hobby into your design uh, life and your mm -hmm. portfolio, and that kind of gave you you know personal insights on on some of these projects. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Here is a question uh, regarding uh, since you just spoke about. And for the last month, working on your capstone project, you worked about 16 hours a day um, to kind of get that finished. Uh, what tools or techniques do you use for time management? And that is a question from David. Um, okay, so I'm very organized with my time. Um, and that's partially because I've had to be very organized with my time because design takes up a lot of time and then when I was diving I was training like 20 plus hours a week um so I make like crazy lists of things like I don't know I think I have one I have one like right here like I just write and write and write lists um and then sometimes after I write my list I'll like organize my day and I'll like take all the things on my list and I'll like estimate how much time I think those things will take me. And then I make like a second list, which is sort of all the time that I have in the day and any other things that I might have scheduled. And then I sort of like schedule in like each task that I have. Um, and if you do that a lot, you end up figuring out like how much time things take you although it doesn't always work. Um, but that's one of the ways that I like to manage my time. That's awesome. That's a, that's a very good strategy, um, especially since yeah. time is something that we can't get back. So gotta make sure that we use, we're, we're used the best with our time that we have. Um, here's a question from Lauren. Mm -hmm. Looking back at your previous experiences, what is the biggest or most impactful thing you have taken with you along the years? And what is something you have left behind? Oh, I don't know what I've left behind. I think, I don't know. I think the thing that I've missed taken with me is that, um, hmm. I think I like really value my creative freedom. I think is the one thing that I've definitely taken with me through all of my co-oping experiences. And for me, I've found out that I got a lot of more creative freedom when I was at working at a smaller company versus a larger company. Um, so that's definitely what I've taken with me. I think maybe the things I could say that I've given up or 
left behind are like a lot of things that I end up sacrificing to be sort of where I am in design or be where I was in diving. Um, and I'm going to say like I have a pretty great social life. I have like tons of friends that I make time for tons of friends but like I don't watch tv I like spend minimal time on social media I like I I understand like no pop culture references because I just like don't value that um so I guess I've like lost some of like the more normal things that people like to do okay um for a student that doesn't have the resources and the co-op um, opportunities that that provides maybe a student that goes to another university um, who's also looking for a job what advice would you give them on selling themselves in their work and this is a question from david okay so i think there are tons of things that you can do to sell yourself in your work and then also get connected with jobs even if you don't go to a place like that um, there are tons of resources for finding jobs and actually like a few of the places that i've worked uh weren't actually places that i was necessarily connected with directly from cincinnati um i think like i think at one point i was on idsa and they might actually just have a list of all like the design firms somewhere so you can look at those lists and like click on all the design firms and see if they have an internship position open or if they have no posting sometimes you can email the like at um, work sort of email that they'll have posted on their website um, but in addition to that you can go on LinkedIn and Lemonish and um, whatever like corn 77 I think all of those have job postings so finding out where to apply isn't very hard but then getting resources together to sort of like what portfolio you might want to put together or what website you might want to put together. I find it really helpful to look at other designers that are sort of close to your same level or in your same position or people that you really are inspired by. And um, at least when I was starting out, I had a whole spreadsheet of websites of other designers that I thought were really inspirational and I would go to those websites and I would look at the kinds of projects that they did on their website and I would use those like kinds of projects to try and um, sort of like brainstorm projects that I wanted to do and that I wanted to put in my portfolio and then also through all those inspirational people you get an idea of how people portray their work um, and I would never say to like copy anyone but like you can sort of understand different styles and sort of mimic some of those in your own way. Um, sort of just get your portfolio together and your work together how you want it. That's a very good answer. Um, for your capstone project, you did a lot of work with UI UX. Is that something that mm -hmm. you taught yourself or is that something that was um, through all, all of your co-op experiences, something that build up as far as learning on the job and at internships? And that is a question coming from Mitali. So the UI UX stuff that I've done for my projects in the past, I'd say is more on the self-taught side of skills that I have. Um, the graphic design firm that I worked at did some UI UX things, so I had like some of a foundation for that. Like I understood how sort of like wireframing works. And then all the places, not well, most of the places that I've co opted have had UI UX teams that I've been able to work on or sort of see the work that they've been doing and learn some things through that. Um, I think. But I think a lot of it's been that I try and incorporate it in my projects and I sort of like learn as I go. Okay. Um, here's a really good question. Since you know, you're a recent grad and now you're going into industry, um, are you ever considering going to grad school? That's a question from Sarah. Right now I'm not considering going to grad school at all. My sister just actually graduated in business and just applied for MBA programs. And 
for me right now, I feel like I have all the skills that I want for what I want to do in design. So I'm not interested in grad programs, but I think they're really cool for some people. Absolutely. I'm going to ask a couple more questions and then we'll kind of wrap things up here. Here's a question cool. from uh, Molly and her question is, are you involved in the entire design development process at level or in your past professional and internship experiences? Or is research and analysis apart from design? Mm -hmm. um, I would say to varying degrees, I've been involved in all parts of the process, especially at level specifically, um, or at least all parts of the process that level does in design, um, which is pretty much all the parts. Um, so like in, at level specifically, we really value like um, working in conjunction with clients, even at like the later stages of a design process to get everything manufactured the way that we designed it essentially. Um, I will say when you asked about research, we definitely still do research, but I don't think I've ever been in a job where I do um, sort of what you would call like really professional design research. There's people who go to school and do like exclusively design research or even friends that I've had at DAP go and do co-op experiences for just design research. So like on a base level, I've done a lot of design research, but never super in depth. Right. And the last question that we want to ask you is, this question is from Uyan. What is your dream company uh, that you want to work with? Oh, that I want to work with. Um, honestly, I don't think I have a dream company. Um, I think partially for me, like a dream would be starting my own business at some point. Um, and so I guess like I would be my own dream company, which is, sounds narcissistic um but I think for now I just want to get as much experience as at really great companies that I love and great firms that I love so I can learn and grow and be part of the design community um so I don't think I really have a dream company I think lots of people are doing cool things but I sort of like to be at consultancies because you know you hop between projects um rather than just one company. Absolutely. Well, um, thank you so much for being part of our lens session. We really appreciate your time and being cool. uh, part of our series. Um, we're really excited Thanks. for, um, you know, your recent grad and I think you're a, a great model for a lot of students that are graduating and uh, a really big motivator for a lot of people to keep doing what they're doing during working from home and things like that. Um, and um, for those who tuned in, thank you so much for being a part of this. We do have a uh, session after this called After Lens. Um, so check your emails. It's literally um, another Zoom gathering for half the time where we chat about this discussion and everyone gets to um, you know, uh, come forward with their opinions and their thoughts on this, this discussion that we have with Ellen. Um, and other than that, don't forget that all of our lens sessions are up on our website, advanced design, advdes.org, and we'll make this recording public as well. Um, well, uh, Ellen, thank you so much, and uh, I'm sure we'll be in touch, and uh, best of luck with everything. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thanks for listening. Take care. And say bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> bye.